Hey guys, and welcome back to another More With Moros video. Today's video is going to be a what's for dinner. I am gonna be sharing with you guys four different dinner meals that we had this past week. I know I'm not the only one who struggles trying to figure out what to have for dinner, to get inspiration or to get ideas. So I'm here to help you guys with all of that. So I really hope that this video will be helpful for you and you guys will like and try some of the recipes that I'm sharing. So let's go ahead and get right into it. For tonight's dinner, we are having these chicken thighs. I do not know how to pronounce that, but you can find this at Trader Joe's and it's like a spice marinade. I'm not sure if it's spicy or not, but I do know that the kids will not usually eat. Aria, she will, but the other ones will not eat chicken if it has a whole bunch of spices on it. So I am gonna be making some good old mac and cheese for them, of course, with some other sides as well. And then I am going to saute up some baby broccoli. Usually I'll just do a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, and kind of just saute it up a little bit, but I'll put a lid on there as well and it will kind of steam too. And then because today we are currently in a rush, Aria has martial arts. We've had a lot going on. Mondays are usually our busiest. So I am just gonna use some Ben's original ready rice, this is their jasmine and it will cook in 90 seconds. I forgot to mention that we're also making this chicken in the air fryer because we are on a time crunch as well. So I'm about to put that in there, get the broccoli sauteing and we should be good to go. All right guys, so here is how dinner turned out. I omitted the jasmine rice just cause I'm trying to stay away from refined carbs. I got two things of the chicken thighs and then a whole bunch of the baby broccolini. But since Frank got some rice, I'll go ahead and show you guys how his turned out and it's Looks already so, so good. good oh the have you tried it so good this is our first time trying this chicken from trader joe's so i'm excited to see how it tastes okay, so for dinner tonight i am trying a new recipe it is pork tenderloin in the dutch oven i recently just got this dutch oven from by deem first of all let's just say how pretty this color is i've just left it out as like kind of like a decoration because of how gorgeous it is but i'm so excited look i haven't even taken this stuff out i'm actually going to rinse it out really quick before i start cooking but i have never used a dutch oven before but i heard it's very comparable to a cast iron which everything i feel like tastes better in a cast iron so i'm really really excited about this recipe i'll leave everything down below you guys can kind of get a general idea of everything that i'm going to put in it but the ingredient list is pretty long so like like I said that recipe will be down below but first I'm gonna start prepping my veggies and I'm making this ahead of time because I think it has to cook for at least a good 30 to 45 minutes it might not take that long because I know these things cook can cook a lot faster too but I think I'm ready to get started all right so I have my spices in here I'm about to season the tenderloin so I have salt pepper garlic powder and then this recipe called for sweet paprika but I have never heard or seen sweet paprika anywhere so I did double the amount of smoked paprika so I think it's totally good I'm gonna mix it all together and then rub it all over the tenderloin
table that I heated up in here. I'm gonna hand break the camera so you can help me film. I'm actually really excited, side note. I'm really excited to see how this turns out I because I've too. never used one of these before. So we're gonna brown our tenderloin. Try to get it in here. So two minutes on one side and then two minutes on the other. All right, guys, so I wanted to quickly tell you a little bit about By Deem's Dutch oven. So I wanted to first say that it is perfect for stewing, broiling, braising, roasting, and table serving. There's no need to switch pots. I actually did everything inside of the Dutch oven. You are able to make moist and juicy food with ease, and the unique tight-fitting lid has raised dots on the inside, which I'll show you guys here in a little bit. This helps the condensation rain back into the food. I'm gonna tell you guys, this was probably the most tender pork I have ever, ever had. And not only is the enamel coating really durable, but it's also non-stick, so it makes for easy cleaning. All I had to do was just put a little bit of dish soap and wipe it out and it was already clean. So leave your stuck on food and scratch marks from cleaning tools in your past. And an ideal pot for any kitchen, this Dutch oven can be used on gas, electric, and induction stoves. And lastly, the cast iron material helps to retain heat and divide it evenly during cooking. That way this pot can be used for generations and for the future to come. This has been cooking for 20 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out, try not to get the vegetables with it, and then I'm gonna let the vegetables cook for another five minutes, and I'm gonna let this stand and cool for the five minutes as well. and tried the pork tenderloin and it is amazing this is definitely for my first dutch oven recipe i think i did a good job also wanted to talk really quickly about their toaster because i have not had a toaster in the longest time so this was another product that i got from by Deem, and i absolutely love because not only is it for thick cut bread bagels but also english muffins this toaster comes with four self-centering slots which is perfect for our big family and another product that I got was this little food storage container, which you guys can tell I absolutely love this color because I got everything in this like mint blue color. It's gorgeous, but you can also put it in the oven as well. So it's definitely versatile. If you guys are interested in checking out some home appliances and kitchen appliances, I will leave a link down below. I definitely recommend checking out. Okay, so for dinner tonight, I am making a copycat noodles and co recipe. It's their pesto cavatappi and and I've made this before in the past. I think it's been years since I've made this last, but um, it used to be one of my favorite recipes to make. So you are going to need some mushrooms. This can be optional if you do not like mushrooms. Actually, I am the only one that likes them. So I'm gonna saute some for me on the side, and then you're going to need some fresh basil because we're actually going to make the pesto ourselves, and we're gonna blend it all together. And then of course, your cavatappi pasta and then some olive oil and salt, and it says garlic salt. I don't have garlic salt. So I'm using garlic powder, minced garlic, cherry tomatoes, Parmesan cheese, which I just realized I don't have a cup, which is what you're gonna need for this recipe, and I'll put everything down below, but we're gonna make it work, and then one fourth a cup of milk. I think this is it. If I've missed anything, like I said, everything will be down below. So I got my water going in here. This is gonna be for the pasta. I'm going to wait to start sauteing the mushrooms and the cherry tomatoes. I'm gonna go ahead and make the pesto first. All right, so I added to my blender the basil leaf, the Parmesan, the olive oil, the minced garlic, and salt, and then I accidentally put a little bit of garlic powder and realized that it wasn't time to put it in yet, but it's still okay. So now I'm just going to blend this all together. It's gonna to be a little bit thick. It's not gonna be like a creamy pesto, so that's totally normal, but you might have to like scrape down the sides to be able to blend it all together. 
I just wanted to add really quickly that if you notice that your pesto is not mixing that well together, you can also put a little splash of milk in there to kind of like loosen things up. And I also think it's because I didn't have enough Parmesan as well, um, but just wanted to make note of that, that if it's looking a little too chunky, just add a little splash of milk. All right guys, so I wanted to show you how the pesto turned out. I have the pasta going right now. I think it's actually almost done. Now I'm sauteing up my mushrooms. Like I said, I'm the only one that likes them, but I did finish sauteing the tomatoes. Here's how they turned out. So now I'm just gonna wait for the pasta to be done, this to be done sauteing, and then we're gonna mix everything together. So here is how it turned out. Looks so good. I actually miss making this meal, so definitely gonna have to make it more in the future too. All right guys, so for this next recipe, this is also a new recipe that I am trying. And let me just first say before we get into everything that you'll need to do, I will definitely be making this recipe again. This was one of my favorites. It was so good. It's Asian glazed meatball. So first you're going to mix all of your meatball ingredients together. I had two pounds of ground turkey and then you're gonna add two teaspoons of sesame oil, one cup of the plain dry breadcrumbs, a half a teaspoon of ground ginger. I just use the kind from the tube and then two eggs and one teaspoon of minced garlic. You're going to mix it all together and form your meatballs. I did an inch, an inch and a half in diameter meatballs and then once that is all done, you are going to put that in your oven at 375 for about 20 to 23 minutes. While that is cooking, you're gonna go ahead and make your glaze that's gonna go all over your meatballs, which in my opinion, is the best part. This was so good. So I did two third cups of hoisin sauce, one third a cup of rice vinegar, one and a half tablespoons of honey, one teaspoon of minced garlic, one and a half teaspoons of sesame oil, one teaspoon of ground ginger, one fourth a cup of low sodium soy sauce, and then lastly, one teaspoon of sriracha sauce. So mix that all together. And of course, I'll leave all the instructions, ingredients, everything down below. And you're going to basically bring your sauce to a boil over medium high heat for about five minutes to allow the sauce to get nice and thick because this is gonna go all over your meatballs once they get out of the oven. I'm telling you guys, these were so delicious and we actually had enough to have leftovers for lunch, which I will be having today, but you're just gonna pour that sauce all over it. Just gently toss your meatballs with the sauce and then you're just going to sprinkle some sesame seeds and garnish with green onions, which unfortunately we did not have, but I will definitely be getting it the next time that I make this. Now for our sides, we just did some steamed broccoli and some jasmine rice, but you can obviously do any kind of sauce that you or side that you want with this meal. It was so good. You guys, try it. If you try any of the recipes, definitely try this one. But this is our last recipe for this what's for dinner video. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you guys try any of these recipes. And also don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. I will see you guys in our next one. Bye guys.